if you give has us it, the... Hasn't it changed at all in the last, say, 10, 20 years? Has there been no improvement at all? The change has been very infinitesimal. It, it hasn't changed very much. Maybe there's a touch here and there. People put, put up ramps in front of their offices and so on. But these are all done based on seal on charity. We need the law to compel people to say that, look, these are people who are deserving of their own rights and dignity. So we compel you to put a ramp here to make the road accessible to provide information and communication technologies uh, wherever necessary, to provide reasonable accommodation as we say it. F for instance, I mean, you employ a person with disability in your job. Definitely you will have to provide those things that will assist him to um, perform um, adequately. Say you, you employ a blind person as a secretary. Now, of course you probably give him a computer. But that's not the end of it. You will need to provide that computer with a, an ac uh, a screen reader that will read out to him as he types mm -hmm. on the computer. That is what we talk about, reasonable accommodation. Obviously, people will talk about cost. But when you consider the amount of work he's going to do and the amount of uh, economic uh, possibilities that will accrue to the company, definitely you forget about the issue of cost. Yeah, the states which have domesticated the disability law, for instance, um, are, they, are they very different from the other states which haven't? Um, well, yeah, I, I, I would say that um, some of them are doing fairly well. I mean, Lagos State uh, is an example, but uh, even then, it's, it's still... There's still a lot to be desired of uh, Lagos State or Plateau State or Bauchi State that have uh, passed the legislation. It's one thing passing a legislation, but it's another thing putting it in practice. It. Yes. yes, enforcing, having the implementation process, having a monitoring and mechanism process to enf enforce that legislation. We don't have that yet in some of uh, these states. In Lagos, yes, I know they have uh, the Lagos um, State Office of Disability Appears, but I think that office needs to do a lot more of it that, you know, than is required. Mm. Okay. Mm. Um, <laughs> Mr. Bashar, if we... Because the other side of the divide is that even those who are living with disabilities, some of them have allowed themselves to be sucked in by their predicament. So they kind of like, and I, I'm trying to find the right words. So like draw- they're, they're having a pity party. Pity party. Um, <laughs> yes, because society has always placed barriers in place in front of these people. They just have no option whatsoever. They go for jobs, they are not given the jobs, even if they merit the jobs. They, I mean, in every shade whatsoever, there are barriers in the way of these people. Okay, you just hold your thoughts, we'll come back so that it would, would, would end up on that point. Okay. Please don't go away. Okay, so Mr. Bashar, you were talking about the, those who are living with pity yeah, party. Was, uh, and yeah, I was talking about the, the barriers placed in the uh, part of um, these people. There's so many barriers, there's so many obstacles, both in terms of uh, providing information and communication technology, both in the physical environment, built environment, the roads, the sidewalks. There's just so many barriers. They, uh, they are not given the jobs, even if they merit the jobs, they don't get the jobs. No reasonable accommodation is provided when they are even employed. And um, so you just wonder, you know, how these people are going to survive. So at the end of the day, some of them turn into um, what we, uh, you know, we talk about uh, begging, which we don't really condone. We would have preferred that, you know, they get jobs, mm -hmm. they get all the necessaries that every other person is given. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 
Okay, Mr. Pashar. So if you're going to say one thing to two people, two sets of people now, those living with disability and then the wholly uh, able-bodied able society, society mm. what would you say to the two groups? Well, um, for my colleagues, I would say that, you know, we have to be really determined. We have to have a lot of determination at the back of our minds that we can succeed. We don't have to have people look down up on us. There are so many of us who are lawyers, engineers, medical doctors, and so on. So all we want is the opportunity to be able to live like others on an equal basis with others. Able-bodied people, we just want you to give us the opportunity. Try us and see whether we can do it or not. If we fail, and I, I doubt if we are going to fail, because we are going to put in the best, because, you, because usually people with disabilities are expected to put in their very best more they're than others. They're going to work harder than the able well, to they are expected, yourself. Yeah, they're expected to work much, much harder you know, to excel. And so I think they are the, the best crop of people, really, for employment. All right. Dan Lame Bashar, Director of Anglo-Nigerian Welfare Association for the Blind. Thank you very much for coming and sensitizing us as to the plight of disabled persons in Nigeria and um, how far we have come or how far we haven't come <laughs> in uh, making their lives more comfortable and uh, making sure that they live like other people, other able-bodied persons. All like, they want, all you guys want, is some respect and, and be given a chance to contribute your quota and to live like normal human beings without being pitied yes. and stuff like that. Thank you very much for coming. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, Sunrise will return in just a moment with the home stretch. Mm.